I said what what dead and lovely I said what what Ben and Steve I said what what horror podcast what you gotta say Steve put it in my butt in my butt <laughs> <laughs> this want, is our best intro to date i feel like we keep topping ourselves on these intros yeah i think eventually people are just gonna start tuning in for the intro and leaving for the rest they'll just be like fuck it all i want to know is how are they gonna top themselves this week <laughs> the word's getting out fast it's like th- yeah this is the the horror movie podcast with the intros you just gotta hear <laughs> Welcome, listeners, to Dead and Lovely, your favorite horror movie review podcast. Here with my main man, Steve Spratling, and your favorite real-life birthday boy, Uncle Ben. Oh, it's Ben's birthday. What are you, 20? I, oh, barely. <laughs> I'm barely legal 33. Barely legal 33. <laughs> what a, what would you be barely legal for at 33? What what milestone have you just hit? I think uh outliving <laughs> outliving Christ, I guess that's pretty cool. Oh fuck yeah, barely li- li- barely legal for outliving Christ. I mean, after I hit 34, I guess that'll be technically when I really have outlived the Messiah. I I really wish when I had turned 25, I had gone into a car rental place and slid my ID across the counter and said, I'm barely legal. (laughs) I'm just going to tell you what, if anybody in my life that is listening to this podcast uh, loves me truly, then on my 34th birthday, I will get a birthday cake and written on that birthday cake will be, suck it, Christ. (laughs) Take that, Jesus. <laughs> I've had myself a, a fantastic, fine birthday, Steve. As we record this, it is June 27th, uh, 2017. That is your birthday. Uh, well, now it is. I guess we're past your birthday, technically, now, don't right? Don't fucking tell me that. Not where you are. It's still my birthday. No, in no. Your time in zone. My, yeah, in California, we're still celebrating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there are people in the streets right now. Shooting off guns, etc. <laughs> Are they out there doing stuff like, uh, like having block party swirl guitar parties, and yeah, uh, yeah. you know maybe maybe playing Ibanez guitars or oh like that? man, there's uh, everybody in LA today was wearing an Ibanez shirt. That's pretty rad, man. That's pretty yeah. rad. Of course, we all say on your birthday, we say uh, he is risen. <laughs> I've had myself a fine birthday, Steve. It kind of started over That's awesome. over this past weekend. See, the, I'm, I'm in this really glorious position where I happen to have married a woman who thinks that birthdays yeah. are actually the most important events that you can have in life. My wife also thinks that. I don't argue with her about it. No, it's not a problem. Your wife also a big fan of Halloween, as is my wife. That's correct. That's because we like things that are nice, and so we married nice things. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, though, they're not they just are things. things. They're that people. is true. No, I mean, but my wife, I mean, let's technically I did buy her in a window at a shop. It's true. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and then I wished real hard and she became a real girl. So so basically this weekend we went up to Asheville, North Carolina, which is a little, oh. little you know, hop, skip and a jump away and spent the weekend yeah. up there with a whole bunch of friends. Uh, some of my nearest and dearest, minus my main man, Steve Spratling, of course. Oh, yeah. Well, I was there in spirit. You were. I noticed. I noticed. I felt a yeah. chill. I felt a tingling uh-huh. in my nether regions, and I was like, oh, Steve. Anytime you went to the bathroom, you felt like somebody was watching you? That was me. I didn't know if it was you or Moaning Myrtle. I knew it was one or the other, and both were No, welcome. it was the two of us together. And I was like, Moaning Myrtle, shut up. We're trying to look at his dick. <laughs> you were Moaning Steve. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, Harry Potter! I can see your dick. Did she, it's not weird." Did she ever really moan much, though? Oh, you no, know what? She, Here's the thing: we might have just uncovered uh-huh. something here. Yeah, because moaning Myrtle in the books and movies is always, of course, as we mentioned on our Harry Potter episode, portrayed as very pervy. 
Yeah, she's sexual as hell, yeah. Do you think she was down there, like, DJing, going, uh, uh. Yeah. That's yeah, where the moaning that... came from? Yeah, the moaning was moaning Myrtle just going to town on herself. Oh, my God. It all yeah. comes together now. Well, I mean, she hung out in the boys' bathroom and watched little boys take baths. I, I'm just going to say, even if she is a 15, 16-year-old ghost, at a certain point, like, you got to stop. You know, watching little boys bathe, right? Listen, you're on the mild side of things, Steve, talking about listening to or watching little boys bathe. She watched oh, little yeah? boys fucking take shits and piss and stuff. She's a freak. She did. What if that's what really got her off? <laughs> like she was like <laughs> she was like, Oh, Harry Potter, I like watching you bathe, but I love watching you shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the like the deeper you get into the moaning myrtle storyline like the more uh -huh. disgusting and weird it gets yeah i mean <laughs> i that poor actress though she is also in that one doctor who episode where she gets like turned into a floor tile or something oh and then remember do you remember this one it was i, don't know uh, I, I, I think she's the, I think it was season uh, two of the of you know the the newer well, I've, seasons. I've seen it then. Yeah, um, Moaning Myrtle got turned turned into like a floor tile, and then she had a boyfriend, and they talked about how they still were able to do some sex stuff, and it was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just fuck a floor tile. Sometimes you fuck a floor tile. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say uh, uh, definitively I haven't fucked a floor tile. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> When I did it, it didn't have a face. <laughs> um, we're not here to judge, folks. We're not here to judge. No. Hey, if you want to fuck a floor tile with a face while listening to ELO, that sounds great to me. I'm kind of, You know, you had me at ELO, really. Yeah, seriously. There ain't a cloud in sight. That's rad shit. Well, while we were in Asheville, man, we just basically went around and uh, as a big pack of us there, we just drank beers at all the wonderful breweries in Asheville, because yeah, Asheville is awesome. just the fucking beer hub of the South. Yeah. And uh, ate great food and had ourselves some really good times. But I want to point out to you, because I've mentioned on previous podcasts that I've been chasing that West Coast IPA dragon, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Shout out to Burial Brewery in Asheville, North Carolina. We went up there to Burial, and they have a IPA called Surf Wax. Surf Wax IPA. Okay. It makes me want to leave the one I'm with. Wow. Start a new relationship with it? It is divine. I mean, it, you know, if you can fuck a floor tile, you can probably fuck a beer. Yeah, no, you can. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, it's unbelievable, dude. It's one of the most perfect beers that I've ever had. I, I would um, love to try it. Now, was Burial Brew started by former members of Between the Buried and Me? That's correct. Actually, you know what? Jamie King from BT Bam actually lives somewhere around around that area. So it actually very yeah, well could yeah. have been. And now that you mention it, they, they sold t-shirts and merchandise at the brewery that were very metal. That would be very interesting to find out. It would. So that was, that was yeah. great. And then today, which is a Tuesday... Uh, we, you know, took the day off of work. Kate took the day off of work, and we just did all kinds of great fun stuff, um, which has yeah. concluded in me sitting here drinking another fine beer, which is called Space Dust by. Uh, oh, I always goddamn say it wrong. Elise, uh, Elysian. 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 There you brew. go. That's yeah. it. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it's a good brew. It's fantastic, man. And I'll tell you what, man. One of the highlights of my birthday today is that we went and saw. Uh, in the theaters there, we went and saw Baby Driver. Have you seen this yet? Oh, with, uh, Edgar Wright's new movie. Edgar Wright's no, new movie. No, I have not. Who you guys will know from Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz yes. and all that stuff. Uh-huh. It is out of control fucking awesome, dude. I cannot recommend it enough. You have to go see it. Okay, yeah. I, I was already interested, so yes, I will. See, I only found out about it like yesterday because we were trying to kind of plan out a little fun birthday day and i usually like to go see uh -huh. a movie on my birthday but it was like well you know kind of the only things in theaters right now that are worth watching are wonder woman which i've already seen twice because it's fucking awesome yeah 
uh-huh. and Guardians of the Galaxy, which of or Guardians of the Galaxy Two, I should say, right? Which I've already seen, and it's fucking awesome. But it's kind of like it's almost about to come out on DVD now, so I didn't really want to. Yeah, it's already too late to go see that again. Yeah. And Kate was like, "Well, there's ba- there's Baby Driver," and I was like, "I don't even know what that is." And she's like, "It's Edgar Wright's <laughs> new movie," and I'm like, "Oh, it's the I'm sequel to Boss Baby." Yeah, exactly, <laughs> dude. It is fucking awesome like the the quickest way i could explain it to you is imagine imagine 500 days of summer by ways okay. of quentin tarantino okay where yeah. it's like no. it's like a strange kind of musical romance uh-huh. comedy yeah yeah i knew it was a musical and that's uh, that interests me a lot well I, it, uh, it's only kind of a musical though it's it's really interesting like there's yeah. it's not like the people in the movie sing songs but the main character there in the movie, he wears headphones and listens to music all the time. So basically, the soundtrack of the music, uh, uh, the soundtrack of the movie, is whatever he's listening to at that time. And okay. it's absolutely brilliant the way that they use it. It's like, uh, especially in the movie when like things are going well, like everything in the scenery syncs up perfectly with the music like even to the point of like lines on the road are going by the exact oh. beats of the song that he's listening to and shit it's like if you watch for stuff in there you'll see it and it's fucking crazy and it also just has some wonderfully i mean brutal agonizing stuff in there it's it's exhausting to watch man it's exhausting <laughs> You got me with exhausting. I think the last time that I was that exhausted by a movie was was Whiplash, um, which stre- oh, okay. dude, Whiplash stressed me out to no yeah. fucking end. Well, uh, yeah, obviously, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, with the subject matter, kind of fits in. Yeah, but this, this movie, dude, I I cannot recommend it enough. It is so fucking badass, man. The chase scenes and stuff, everything, badass. Go see Baby Driver. It's fucking great. Awesome. Uh, I believe John Hamm is in it. Yes, that, that is, is correct. Cr- and he is just a fucking handsome, badass son of a bitch. I think that he's great. Yeah. Let, Love me some John Hamm. Let Hamm me here. ask you a John Hamm question, because I was talking uh, to Kate about this on the way home. What would okay. you think if they ever did a live-action film adaptation of Frank Miller's Dark Knight with John Hamm as an older Bruce Wayne slash Batman? Um... I would never bet against John Hamm because John Hamm is amazing. Yeah. Uh, I can see because he's he's got that that handsome. And he's big. Uh, like, he's like big and brawny. He, he's a yeah. He's a big like midwestern guy. Yeah. He's got he's got a great voice. He's yeah, got dark he hair. could easily play like I mean he, he yeah he would play a great like older Bruce Wayne for sure. I say older as though he's old. He's not old, but like he he has that gravitas. Like he has that totally. like yeah, he he could play an older Bruce Wayne, put like a gray streak or two in his hair and and boom, like Well, yeah. all they got to do is get that makeup artist that worked on fucking Prometheus to age him up a little bit. <laughs> 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 Nobody will notice. <laughs> yeah, it'll be totally natural. Looking. Everybody will be like, "Yeah, no, that that's an old man right there for sure." That's not Memento. Yeah, <laughs> I think he's a super underrated actor too because you know yeah, we've seen absolutely. him in serious roles and like Mad Men and shit. And then, but he's also amazing in comedic roles. I love seeing him play comedic shit. There's something to me, man, yeah. that is. There's nothing funnier than seeing like a classically handsome guy like John Hamm yeah. or George Clooney, yeah, doing really silly shit. Have you uh, have you heard any of his um, any of his uh, episodes of the Comedy Bang Bang podcast? Because he's not. he's really funny. In fact, um, <laughs> quick plug for Comedy Bang Bang: the episode recent to you and I here in the past in the future everyone will be like that was a month ago uh but the episode of comedy bang bang that came out on Monday has Edgar Wright and John Hamm oh shit uh, well I need to listen to that yeah yeah check it out uh John Hamm uh really funny dude so that's awesome I, and I highly recommend checking him out anywhere he is and in this movie no no real spoilers here but he plays a a pretty hard ass fucking guy um, so it's cool to see that kind of range coming from him. He can do pretty much anything very convincingly. 
Uh, yeah. He's awesome. Yeah, seriously, dude. The movie's fucking great. I can't wait for you to see it and hear what you think about it. Yeah. I will absolutely check it out. What have you seen lately that was good? Well, Ben, um, I I have an obsessive personality. Um, Same. And uh, watching the movie that we're covering this week made me uh, get obsessed with trying to understand uh, mid... 90s to early 2000s horror movies. Oh, in other words, the golden age of horror. <laughs> right? <laughs> the best horror movies ever made. <laughs> and so, um, I I started with Scream 1, okay. and um, I watched all four Scream movies, which, do it. Uh, Wes Craven's great. Wes, uh, 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 definitely Scream 1 is, is a great movie. Scream 2 is a good movie. Scream three is a motion picture. It is, and Scream four, yeah, Scream Scream three is certainly a motion picture. I am positive of that because they are flickering images in in a continuous order. I'll tell you this: of all the motion pictures I've ever seen, Scream three is one of them. Mm -hmm, for <laughs> sure, yeah. And uh, Scream four is good. So yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, it's it's good. Um, but I, I also watched um, I, I watched uh, a few others. I watched I Know What You Did Last Summer. Oh God! Which um, I the last time I had seen that was in the theater when it came out oh, as wow. a teen. Yeah, and it's dark as fuck. Like that movie is really dark and could have been really good. I think but the last time that I watched that, I was probably just making out on a couch with a woman that wasn't my wife yet probably that sounds like you which has yeah. been a goddamn long time yeah <laughs> um i i i would say this for sure about i know what you did last summer the premise that four kids with bright futures uh run someone over and 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 make a pact to keep that secret so that they can have futures is first off some white ass shit like right. yeah definitely <laughs> and that's what i discovered about a lot like the this era of movie making is that it's white as hell well that's what was funny is like earlier this week you sent me a text message with like posters from like all of these uh -huh. mid 90s horror movies and it was like the faculty and i know what you did and scream and uh -huh. final destination uh, and yeah. i was like disturbing behavior h2o yeah i was like this is just a bunch of posters of white people yeah and they all look about the same all yeah. the posters have the same like yeah um so i i know what you did last summer had uh, potential, but it also was just building off of Scream, sort of. Yeah, totally. Like, it was already like overly conscious of horror movies, and then Urban Legend is um, also okay, not good. The acting's, uh, yes. Um, but it also had that sort of meta element. Mm -hmm. And that that's a big thing uh, in the movies that were you know leading up to the movie we're talking about today, which is Final Destination. Um, it is a big element, and as I said before, when we talked about um, uh, In the Mouth of Madness, which is a meta horror movie, yeah, uh, I I do like some meta horror movies, but it. It just went crazy. It was, it was like this era of filmmaking we're getting into today. It, it had this like great potential, which I said when we talked about Hellraiser, there was this great potential for uh, horror movies to just get weird. Yeah. Like uh, Hellraiser and Hellraiser Two came out, and Candyman, which is also based off a of Clive Barker mm. uh, short story. Candyman is weird. And certainly is like an inspiration to some of these movies like uh, Urban Legend, etc. And then Scream, which is a good movie. It like, is. It totally uh, is. And what, yeah, and Wes Craven was building off of what he did in New Nightmare. Yeah, definitely so. Uh, 
And, and and even Scream 2 is, is a good movie because he took it like that extra meta level where he was like, okay, well, now we have a movie about what happened in the first movie. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I like that he actually kept adding those meta levels for each Scream movie, but like it got ridiculous. Um, I'm really interested today when we get, we're going to get to that final destination in a little bit. But I'm really interested today in talking about why from 1996 to 2001, horror movies were so bad. They were very, very bad for the most part. Yeah, they weren't good. So uh, I watched a lot of those, and and, and I'll say almost definitively, yeah, they were bad. Well, what's the one that floated to the top for you of all those ones that you watched? Well, Scream is the best Let's, let's of exclude those. Scream, because that's obviously Okay, the best. yeah. Um, just ex- and, and entirely excluding the Scream franchise, I would say... Um, I would say I Know What You Did Last Summer had the most potential and actually squandered the talent the least. Because it did have very talented... It has Sarah Michelle Gellar, it has Freddie Prinze Jr., Ryan Phillippe, it has... Um, Oh, I can't remember Jennifer the Hewitt, other. I think Jennifer Love Hewitt. Yeah, she's the main character, um, and they all do really great. And I, uh, Sarah Michelle Gellar is great. I think Freddie Prince Jr. is great. In fact, what this movie made me think of when I was watching, uh, I know what you did last summer, and actually talked about this this morning with my wife, is that I think the best movie to come out of all of this era of horror movies is the first Scooby-Doo movie written by James Gunn. <laughs> you know, I've never seen it. Check it out. It's not bad. It's really? good. And it, it it follows so much of the same stuff that these horror movies do, but it's like obvious satire. Huh. Like it's obviously making fun. I mean, it's, the, it's satire of the way that a Scooby-Doo episode works, but it's also satire of horror movies at the time with like that self-referential like meta element. Hmm. Um, And it's written by James Gunn. I mean, we're talking about the guy who wrote and directed Slither and, and, uh, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I didn't know that he did that. Yeah, so I think honestly... I didn't watch Scooby Doo. I will rewatch it because I. The more I think about it, the more I'm like, eh, I think that was an all right movie. I, I think that's probably the best horror movie to come out of that era, and it came out in 2003. Damn. So. <laughs> there are there are certain things that came out around that time period because you know, I, I'm sure we say something like that time period was devoid of any good horror movies, and I'm sure that we'll get a lot of people correcting us. There there was some good stuff. Obviously, stuff like Mouth of Madness, Event Horizon. Event Horizon, yeah, it's, great. Oh, uh, it's so rad. Sleep, Sleepy Hollow, I would say. I is, love is really Sleepy good. Hollow. Uh, the Sixth Sense came out in '99. Uh, and we had that and, wave of Asian horror stuff too, like The Ring and the Gr- Oh yeah, and the Grudge. a lot of good stuff. The, yeah. And I feel like too, though, you know, kind of similar to how Scream came along and did something new and cool, and then you had all these waves of imitators that just missed the point entirely. Yeah, I think The Ring think, did that too, where it's like there were a lot of sort of J-horror style movies that came out around that time period that just missed the fucking point. Yeah, um, I think the best uh, meta horror movie to come out around that time after Scream would be Shadow of the Vampire, which came out in 2000, the I same year as Final that. Destination. Shadow of the Vampire is good. I, I really like it. I mean, you got uh, y- you have. Um, the idea of the original Nosferatu, which is already, you know, this creepy thing. And then you have John Malkovich and oh. you have, yeah, you have Willem Dafoe. Like you have All this All kinds of great, ugly people in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and Willem Dafoe is playing Max Shrek. He's playing Nosferatu. It makes sense. Is, uh, um, is Steve Buscemi in here to make the holy trinity of ugly Hollywood actors? God, that would have been great, wouldn't it? <laughs> or, or wild card, Clint Howard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Clint. Imagine if you um, had all five, what was that, four or five dudes on screen at the same time. Like, it would act, it would just crack the lens. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I would think, like, if, if you really wanted to balance out, say, the handsomeness 
of like an Alec Baldwin or a George Clooney or somebody like that, you get those five. Like you just get those guys on the other side of the screen. Yeah. And it's like, like if, if you were to get, okay, let's think about this. John Hamm plays Batman yeah. versus five of his biggest villains played by Clint Howard, Steve Buscemi, et cetera. Dude, like, I'm going, I'm going to go ahead and call it right here. They do a live action Frank Miller, Dark Knight. Uh -huh. Fucking John Hamm as Batman. Dude, goddamn uh, Willem Dafoe as the Joker would be out of control. He was a great green goblin, that was for sure. Oh my god. Let's 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 retract that statement. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, could you imagine him as like an older, effeminate Joker like he is in Dark Knight? No, that would actually be really interesting. That'd be bad as shit, man. It'd be awesome. But yeah, there were some good there were some good flicks that came out in this era, but all the ones that were kind of your mainstream, you know, t popular with teenagers, big in theaters kind of movies were pretty fucking shot. Um, Scream came along, and I'm, I'm with you. It really did set up kind of a, a new bar and some new ideas um, for how horror could look and feel in the mid-90s. And then there was just all these movies that just totally fucking missed the point. Would you say that fi today's topic, Final Destination, is one of those movies? Yes, this movie is terrible. <laughs> this... <laughs> This is a bad movie. I'm so excited to talk about it. Yeah, this is the first time that like we're doing a movie where I can't I can't make it good. Like I can't <laughs> no, no matter how hard I try and I want to because the people involved with this are like people I'd like to work with, people that are great, etc. But nothing none of this comes together and none of it comes together for me in my head and it doesn't make sense and I think that something nefarious made this movie happen. Oh damn man. Well maybe maybe one day they make a movie that's like a meta version of what happened on the set of this movie. I'm writing it right now, yeah. I'm on it. <laughs> well the main final final destination. <laughs> the main subject of this movie is your destination of dying, what your final demise is going to be. So we figured it would be a really great way to get into this episode <laughs> to delve deep into a BuzzFeed quiz and find out, yeah. Steve, how we're going to die. Yeah, let's see what those warlocks at BuzzFeed know that we don't. We've been to the future. I've seen my corpse. <laughs> and it's handsome. It was. It was a handsome corpse. You know what? I, I did ask you to leave the room, and I did kiss myself for a while. Oh. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm cute. You did a little bit of that that uh, Alien Covenant fucking action, didn't you? <laughs> yep, that was me. Oh, God. <laughs> Alien Covenanting. Actually, Steve, hang on one second, because I just realized my trackpad just died, and I've got to change the batteries in it. Okay. Sing the listeners a song. I'm singing a song for you, listeners. Good. Yeah, it was a good one. I actually I should sing Rocky Mountain High since that one <laughs> seems to matter so much for this stupid fucking movie. So the quiz that we're going to take here today is on BuzzFeed.com, and it is called How Are You Going to Die? It was written by Nina Mohan. Thank you, Nina Mohan. Nina, you're the best. We're going to answer a couple of questions here with you guys. I advise you all to take the quiz with us if you're sitting in front of your CPU. <laughs> now, the first question that we have here is pick a reaper. And this is sort and of this a, one's visual. It's a visual yeah. question here. The rest of them are, are verbal, but we got a couple options yeah. here. We got one that is a blindfolded sort of marble statue of yeah. the classic death. We've got the second one here, which is the little crocheted sort of cutesy Grim Reaper. Yeah, super cute, yeah. The third one kind of looks like Robert Smith as the Grim Reaper. Yeah, yeah, he looks like Robert Smith as the Grim Reaper if he went to the mall and bought a uh, scythe. <laughs> like, it's a, it's a mall ninja scythe. Hashtag mall scythe. Yeah. Uh, our fourth option is a an attractive brunette woman who seems to be just sort of sexy death. Yeah, she's just hanging out in a cemetery. You know how you do. Like you do. Just kind of caressing yourself. Yeah. We got the fifth option here. 
which is sort of a cartoonish, silly looking death, and the sixth option, which is just sort of a classic black cloaked Grim Reaper. You know what that that sixth option kind of looks like? Uh, one of those mirrors you could win in the eighties at a uh, at a, a state fair. Oh damn it! That would have yes. like a like Guns and Roses or something in it. This looks like. You'd have this and you'd hang it up on your wall and be like, I'm badass. I thought it kind of looked like a tap out or affliction shirt. Oh, it does. <laughs> you know what? Same thing, right? Like the people who made those mirrors made affliction shirts. People still wear affliction and tap out shirts as though they're not aware that that is just you telling the entire public and everyone you ever encounter, I am a dickhead. Yeah. It's unreal. I mean,. To be fair, people did vote for Trump. So, like, I mean, I don't know. How's the world work? <laughs> well, who is your reaper of choice here, Steve? Well, Ben, I I, um, I love cute things. So I'm going to go with that crocheted reaper. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to actually go with our number one choice here. The marble blindfolded death. I think that's cool. And it kind of reminds me of Father Vic, which is Megadeth's. Uh, uh, yeah. Little dude. Didn't. Uh, didn't you recently go to an Iron Maiden show, Ben? I went to an Iron Maiden show, and I had a goddamn great time. It was fucking great. Just thought I'd mention it so everybody would know. Oh. Ben's cooler than all of us. It was so fun, uh, Ben, what will your gravestone say? Will it say, rest in peace? Mm. Will it say, the best is yet to come? I, I don't know what that means. Mm. Uh, will it say, bye, Felicia? <laughs> will it say, well, this sucks? Will it say, return to Cinder, which is, I guess, some sort of ironic Southern Baptist line? <laughs> um, or will it say, truth to your own spirit? Um, I guess that of, of these choices that we have right here, considering I was homeschooled is not a choice, Mm-hmm. Yeah, it should be. I think that I'll probably go with, well, this sucks, because that seems to be something that I say a lot whenever things are going very badly and it's getting to me. I do tend to just kind of go, well, this fucking sucks. So, yeah, well, this yeah. sucks is my choice. What about you? I'm going to go with bye, Felicia, because um, <laughs> as, as, as someone who has researched some really old stuff from time to time, it's really fun when you run across something that makes no sense. And I think in, I don't know, uh, five years, by Felicia would make no sense to most people. I think that it might just kind of convey to people that in life you were a really big Felicia Day fan. I, you know what? Not too wrong. I like Felicia Day. It's not wrong at all. I just read her autobiography. She's great, yeah. She is the female Ben Eller. Yeah, yeah, I'd say that's about right. In every possible yeah. way. Homeschooled and everything. Yeah. Well, our uh -huh. next, our next thing that we got here, Steve, is that we have to pick a final meal. I guess we're oh, the last man. meal to have on this wonderful earth here. We've got ourselves a big old fat, juicy steak. Looks like it's uh, a bit over medium. I agree. That close looks to a little medium past well. where I want it. Yeah, I, I would prefer it to be closer to uh, rare, mid-rare. Mm. Correct. But, you know, whatever. I'm going to assume you can ask uh, your final meal. You can get the steak you want, right? Pro probably so. Our second okay. option here seems to be a bunch of little tartlets. Um, third option <laughs> is a good old burger and fries. Fourth option here we have... Some oysters, it would appear. Uh, we've got ourselves a pizza pie. And our last option here seems to be some caviars on toast. Now, these are these are weird choices to me, Steve, because when I think of like yeah. what people's favorite foods must be, okay, burger, steak, pizza. Okay, I, yeah. I accept those, but... What, it, what about the other three? Well, you're telling me that like sushi isn't on here? Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Like, there's no curry. No. Um, there's not taco. Like, fucking tacos aren't on here. Tacos? Yeah, what the shit? I mean, honestly, uh, if I were making a choice, tacos would be it. Yeah. Because uh, there's so much variation. Yeah. But um, choosing here, I I really rarely eat beef. Um, 
for health reasons mm-hmm. mostly. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I love steak. Uh, I love it. Mm-hmm. So I, I would choose the steak. I think if, if I had my choice here of these options here, I, I, I think that I would probably go for a good old slice of a good pizza pie. Now, this one they have pictured looks like a kind of a medium crust pizza, but if I could have myself a good old New York slice, a big foldable uh-huh. flappy slice, right? I'd yeah. probably go down in flames pretty happy. Yeah, no, I understand that. Um, yeah, uh, honestly, a pizza, a burger, sounds great. Um, uh, caviar on toast? Go to hell. Like, I, <laughs> what? I I lived in Russia for two years of my life. Uh, in Russia, caviar is still a bit expensive, but not very expensive. They have uh, caviar-flavored chips, yeah. etc. Yeah, it's uh, a pretty common flavor. And I'll tell you this, caviar, not great. It's kind of Just like salty. salty and fishy. Yeah. 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 Not a, not a ton to it. Um, uh, those tartlets look look pretty good, though. They so. do. They look lovely. Now, Ben, what will you do on your last day? Mm. You've only got... It's your last day, Ben. So, on your last day, are you going to reread your favorite book? Mm. Are you going to spend the day with loved ones? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Are you going to visit all your favorite fast food joints? Ugh. Uh, Tinder. Mm. Uh, I'm going to take that to mean bone. Uh, hope, hope of bone. That's what Tinder is. Tinder's, Tinder's, uh, their, their commercials should say Tinder, hope of bone. Yeah. Um, just go with the flow Hmm. or go to a theme park. You know, I have many loved ones in my life, my my lovely wife and my friends and my family and so on. I think I would probably go uh-huh. spend the day with loved ones. Is probably that's probably where I would be at. Like, if I could kind of combine some of these yeah. together, and it's like spend the day with loved yeah, ones absolutely. At, a, at a theme park, just going with the flow and visiting. Not my favorite fast food joints because I don't have favorite. Fa- uh, I lie. Chick Fil A is my favorite fast food joint, but that's not where I would be yeah. going to. So, yeah, I'm gonna go spend the day with loved ones. What about you? Uh, Ben, there's no other choice than spend the day with loved ones, but I am going to just for, uh, sake, cause this might be the one question that determines the right. answer. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say just go with the flow. Yeah. In which case, uh, I know how the flow goes when my wife's around, I would spend the entire day with her. So it's a strong choice. That's a strong choice, yeah. man. I, I like those kinds of days too. Now we've got another question here, which is. Where would you want to be laid to rest? Now, this is another pictorial sort of question. Yeah, and this is already a false assumption for me because I'm donating my body to science. Science? Uh, Why do you want to do that, man? What are they going to do? Fucking find fossils in you? Yeah. That, yes, I've been eating fossils <laughs> since birth. <laughs> my mother fed me fossil milk. She said it would make me grow big and dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> so our choices here again this is a pictorial question here so kind of generic there's one that kind of looks like an arlington sort of cemetery there's one that has yeah. a big cherry tree we have then we get into the interesting choices here we've got ocean right we've got burning funeral pyre mother of dragons uh-huh. style yeah we've got ourselves a mausoleum in the last uh-huh. choice, it looks like the uh, kind of a crypt there where we just have sort of a wall of bones. Kind of like that place under, was it France or somewhere? Yeah, France, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. So, yeah, just a bunch of skulls. Um, I'm I'm going to pick that um, because I think that's, that's closest to... I, I just think, you know, once you die, it's like, who who cares what happens to your body? Yeah. I just don't want my my relatives to have to spend a bunch of money on me. Yeah, exactly. It's fucking stupid, man. It's fucking yeah. stupid the way that we fucking treat dead people around here. I yeah. think of these choices, I'm going to go ocean. I have, I yeah. have no idea what happens mm-hmm. when we die. I think that anyone who tells yeah. you that they know what happens is full of shit. Well, yeah, you can't know. It's you can't yeah. know. So I have no it's, clue. It is beyond your knowledge. But I do like the thought of being recycled into other organisms, yeah. which is something that being thrown into the ocean 
might yeah. provide me. It might provide my existing molecules and energies uh -huh. to be reabsorbed into other creatures and recycled in a productive way. Yeah, you know, I love to think about the fact that all the elements that make me up uh, were created in the Big Bang. In, in that in that short plank length moment uh, between non-existence and existence, all the elements that would eventually become Steven were created in that moment, and they'll, they'll just keep living on. Now, I know, uh, well... Uh, again, we don't know, but I feel very strongly it's likely that every bit of my consciousness will just cease to exist. Yes. But it is it is a cool thought to know that the elements that make me up will continue on. Now, you're talking about the events of Genesis chapter 1. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> In the beginning, etc. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I had a thought recently about all that. If God is all powerful, yeah, let's hear it. Couldn't He have done everything in just one day? You know, it seems to me that let's just talk about it. Like, did he need a did he need a break? Was he tired? I think so. Was he catching up on Netflix? Like, what was he doing? Well, listen, I like to believe, I mean, what? I don't believe in God, so <laughs> any, anything I say after this is immediately nullified. It's a flight two, of fancy. Yeah, I like to believe that God exists in uh, the past, present, and future as one eternal now, and so, yeah, he, he was probably catching up on Marvel movies, I would imagine. Like, Do you want to start a boy band called One Eternal Now? Yes. <laughs> I've been waiting for that question for months. Then when we started this, my entire purpose was that we would start a boy band named One Eternal Now. I was like, yeah, horror movies, that'll get us there. <laughs> but, it, you know, it's one of those questions that just kind of bugs me. It's like, really, if he's all powerful, couldn't he have just gotten it done in like a nanosecond? Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think to be fair to any of our Christian listeners, and I'm sure we have tons, um, to be fair to any of our Christian listeners, they would say that uh, God had a preordained mission and that he fulfilled it within seven periods. Perhaps there were other things going on during that time that we yet know not of. Mm. Yeah. I want to write some Bible fan fiction. Is that okay? Yeah, me too. <laughs> God damn yes. <laughs> I want to know what the hell was Isaiah up to when he wasn't tripping? <laughs> now, what was Ezekiel doing that caused him to see angels with wings that for some reason covered their ankles? <laughs> Why? <laughs> now, here's, here's where my mind goes with it, Steve. is like... Considering that you and I, in our own personal dialogue, have figured up X-Men Age of Apocalypse universes for basically every book yeah. and movie uh -huh. franchise possible. That's all I think about all the time, yep. What is the Bible's Age of Apocalypse? I've got oh to figure it out. Oh my fucking God, that sounds amazing. Okay, here's what happens. Okay, Bible Age of Apocalypse. So... The uh, uh, the pale rider on the horse called Death. Yes. He uh, has a son. His son is mentally unstable. His son uses some uh, Bible magic. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it Bible magic. Okay. With a K, M A G M A G I C K. Yeah, clearly. He uses Bible magic. Does he go back and some... kill Lucifer? He goes back to hope. He's gonna try. While Jesus is fasting for 40 days in the desert, he's going to try to kill the devil when the devil comes to tempt him. But accidentally, oops, kills Jesus. Early. Right bev yeah, early, before he's able to atone for the sins of mankind. Yes. Obviously. And then I was I was kind of I was kind of hoping that he killed Lucifer and then like Jesus doesn't get crucified and becomes all powerful and greedy and stuff. Oh shit! Like Kingdom Come, like he's like Superman. <laughs> yes, exactly. He, like yeah. King Holy shit! Is Kingdom yeah. Come just the Bible Age of Apocalypse? Yes, that's <laughs> what it is. Kingdom Come is the Bible Age of Apocalypse. <laughs> We've just solved 
all of the answers you guys do. We just into solved the podcast world here. hunger. Yeah. If anybody's hungry right now, eat what we just said. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> so Ben, what happens after you die? <laughs> well, we got a couple options here. We got a peaceful sleep, an amazing afterlife, probably right. nothing, reincarnation. You become worm food, or who cares? Focus on this life. Okay, okay. Um, well, Ben, um, my personal philosophy is focus on this life. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go with that. YOLO. Yeah. You only live once, but y you should probably not do a bunch of stupid shit that will lead you to have a short life. I wish that Dance Like Nobody's Watching was one of the options here. God, right? <laughs> I wish that was one of the options for most questions. What happens after you die? Dance like nobody's watching. <laughs> Dance like nobody's watching. I mean, what the hell? Might as well. I think kind of going off of my philosophy I just said where our elements are recycled, I think you become worm food seems like a good choice because my energies yeah. ought to be absorbed by something else, which will become something else, which will become something else. I think that's the, the circle of life with which... Uh, Elton John spoke to us about. Yeah, it moves us all. <laughs> now, Stephen, our next choice here is pick a stuffed animal. I don't know where the fucking shit this falls in all this goddamn shit, but what are our I options? I don't either, and I don't like it. Our options are, uh, a, uh, is that a swan? They're looks terribly like a swan. taxidermied animals. They're amateur yeah. hour taxidermy. It looks like some sort of long-nosed rodent of Ooh. some type. Yeah. Then uh, a cougar that it was surprised by a bad birthday gift. Yeah. Um, a fox who I think may be drunk. Yeah, he's like, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, looks like the missing link of some sort. And then uh, a large bat. Yeah. Now, pin, pin, pick a stuffed animal. I am going to go with, I think of these right here. I'm going to go with that bat, because that bat seems to be sort of in a pose that says, what? You know, what? Yeah, what? What? Uh, like, what is it you have to say to a bat? Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to go with him. He seems kind of aggressive, ready to deal with whatever is about to confront him in the afterlife. Uh, now, I'm going to go with that cougar who I'm now going to describe as just smelled uh, a carbon monoxide leak too late. Yeah, he's like, oh, no. <laughs> oh no shit <laughs> alright Ben what did you get I am going oh look at this you're gonna die of laughter and I got myself a little gift of Jennifer oh. Lawrence having herself a lol at the Oscars or something which is lovely I think That's, Jennifer Lawrence yeah, is fucking I love awesome. Jennifer Lawrence yeah. I want to she's fucking best, hang yeah. out with her dude she seems awesome as shit yeah she seems very great Yep. I've got you're hilarious and don't take anything too seriously People are envious of your carefree spirit and your cheery personality. You'll perish in the most jovial way possible. That's okay. The, all, all of this sounds actually very accurate for you. I'm, it's not too far off. I, <laughs> no, I, it's I don't not. hate it. I don't hate it at all. What about you, uh, Steve? How are you going to perish? I, I actually can't say this is false. <laughs> um, you're going to die of boredom. Um, <laughs> You're an adventurous thrill seeker. That's not true. People love how bold you are. That is true. And you're not afraid to take risks. Agreed. Some hmm. might call that psychopathy. <laughs> it could be. When you pass away, you're already you'll already have accomplished everything there is to do here. I actually believe that. All right. <laughs> I, I think ennui might kill me. Like, I might just be sitting here one day and be like, oh, life. And then, uh, <laughs> gone. It very well could be. No that, more Steven. That was an informative quiz. I enjoyed that. <laughs> I learned a lot. Yeah. Thanks, BuzzFeed. Well, now that we've moved on to that, let's go ahead and get into the meat of this podcast and talk about uh, the movie that we have chosen this week, which is Final Destination. When did this movie come out, Steve? 1990 what? He came out in 2000. Oh, what? <laughs> 1990, 2000. He came out in 1990, 2000. It shouldn't. It doesn't make any sense, Ben. It doesn't make any sense. Let me talk about this movie for about 10 seconds, 
and, and just blow your mind. Hit me. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say uh, uh, some some titles and some numbers. Yes. Scream. Budget fourteen million. New nightmare. Budget eight million. I know what you did last summer. Budget seventeen million. Urban legend. Budget fourteen million. The faculty. Budget fifteen million. This movie budget twenty three million dollars. Holy shit! Where did it go? That's a ton Where of money. Where did it go? All those movies I just mentioned have uh, actors like Drew Barrymore, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Ryan Phillippe, uh, Freddie Prinze Jr. Uh, Ur- Urban Legend has uh, Jay- well, uh, fucking Jamie Lee Curtis in H two O. Uh, yeah, yeah, Jared Leto. Uh, tons of people are in these movies. Who the fuck is in this movie to justify twenty-three million dollar budgets? Holy cow, that is a lot of fucking money, dude. Yes, Ali Larder had done Friday Night Lights. Ali Larder's great. Yeah. I don't have any problem with Ali Larder. Yeah. Devin Sawa, very charming. He had done Idle Hands. He had, he was a child star, etc. He'd been around. Mm-hmm. Um. Kerr Smith, who was in uh, a, a, a few television projects, including Dawson's Creek, he plays the bully. God, wouldn't you hate for your name to be Kerr? Yes, I would hate to ever be in the proximity of the that character. <laughs> I want to talk so much about how I fantasize about punching that guy in the face. <laughs> but Sean William Scott, just off of... Uh, um, American uh, Pie. American Pie, yeah. But again, these aren't big names. No. These uh-huh. are these are rising names. Yeah. Just, I mean, earlier, like Nev Campbell, et cetera, in Scream, like they they were also rising names, but they were really rising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Devin Sawa didn't go anywhere. Like Kerr Smith is not Jared Leto. This is kind of like a, a whole cast of like the one, two, three kid. Yes, this is yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. Um also watching this the first time, I and, and I'm not making this up. It's going to seem like I'm making it up because it's too perfect. Watching this the first time, I thought this seems like a bad X-Files episode. I could feel that, yeah. This movie uh, written <laughs> originally as an X-Files spec script no in 1994. Way. Yes, Jeffrey Reddick, who, by the way, read about this guy who wrote the original spec script and wrote, you know, has credit for all of the Final Destination movies. Uh, he's he's great. Like he, at the age of fourteen, wrote a um, a spec script for a uh, Nightmare on Elm Street prequel. Oh, he sent it to New Line Cinema. Uh, they, you know, sent back what they would normally send back, which is we don't accept un, you know, <laughs> unrequested uh, scripts, etc. He persisted, uh, got into this like sort of phone relationship with Bob Shea mm-hmm. and his assistant, and then when he went to college, landed, of course, this uh, great internship with New Line that turned into an eleven-year career. That then turned into this movie. I heard a, that story on another horror movie podcast called Scream Addicts. They had that guy on there. Oh. I think they were talking about, damn it, what movie were they talking about? It might have been Suspiria. I can't remember, but there's an episode with the the, uh, the guy you were just talking about, and he's on the Scream yeah. Addicts. So go check out that podcast, Scream Addicts. It's really I, cool. Yeah, and I have, like, no ill will toward him he wrote an x-files spec script someone at new line said you could probably turn this into a movie he did it and then it was handed over to uh glenn morgan and james wong from the x-files damn james wong directed it glenn morgan and james wong rewrote the script to fit like their own standards i Honestly, I imagine if you saw the spec script and the shooting script, they're not that different. But because this is an ex- episode of X Files, but, um, but really long. Here's the thing that blows my mind about this movie, yeah. though, is not just the budget; it's how much it made. This movie made 113 million dollars. God damn. Compare that to I know what you did last summer, which made 125 million dollars with good actors. Wow. Compare that to 
to Urban Legend, which made $72 million, and The Faculty, which made $40 million. Like, Golly, these dude. are movies with good actors, better directors, better writers. This movie made a ton of money, and I would say the main reason is in the year 1999, there were no new, like, uh, horror movie, um, uh, wh- what would you say? Like, uh, I guess franchises starting up. Mm. There were, there were like, uh, you know, I know what you did last, I still know what you did last summer or like, uh, urban legends or like, uh, scream three or something. Right. But final destination was the first original sort of teen scream that came out around that time. And so, teens were like, yay, this is for us. This is our movie. Um, and in the end, this movie is sincerely a bloated X-Files episode. It's it's a, it's a not good. Well, and maybe in a lot of ways, too, you know, the popularity of the movie might have even just stemmed from the fact that I think it's pretty natural for all of us to... I think it's pretty natural for all of us to wonder how am I going to die? Or, like, if I knew how I was going to die, could I avoid it? Can I avoid my destiny? Could I avoid my fate? Because, especially through religion, a lot of people believe, as we talked about in Math of Madness, a lot of people do believe in predestination that everything that's ever going to happen to you, your entrance and your exit, are already completely planned out. But if you knew about it, could you weasel your way out of it? And then what would happen? I think that's an entertaining, you know, kind of primordial notion that I believe most all of us think about at some point or another. Kind of, kind of, sort of in a way like Nightmare on Elm Street and how it deals with, with nightmares and dreams and stuff. It's a, it is a common experience that all of us can have. So maybe that's something that made this more successful is that it's very relatable. I will say for sure that a movie that is actually about death stalking people would be a good movie, but I don't think this movie is about death stalking people. <laughs> Let's get into it. Damn, man. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so here's my theory about this movie. Tell me. Um, the main character, Alex, has uh, telekinetic powers. And he also has an anxiety disorder, and his anxiety disorder is driving his telekinetic powers to kill his friends. What? Yep. That's it. That's the. Th- that's to me. That's what this movie is. There is no way to me that death is involved in the least bit. Because oh just God. think about this: when has death ever missed? I, I'm I'm gonna accept the idea that death meant to kill them on the plane, and they got off. But I'm not going to accept the idea that at the in the end, when death is trying to kill either Devin Sawa or Ali Larker, that it, it, it keeps missing. That's Why? fucking rad, dude. I like this. It doesn't make any sense. And the fact is that three times in this movie, uh, Alex, Devin Sawa, realizes something about what's happening and then it makes it happen. Like... It's like self-fulfilling um, prophecy kind of shit. Yeah, like, the thing is that after the plane crash in this, 39 days pass without any incident. Yeah. <laughs> nothing, yeah, you think nothing that death would be a little bit more on his yeah. feet about that. Yeah, and then in the denouement of this movie, three months pass without any incident. And wow. all that happens in between that time is that Alex gets a notion he gets an idea about what's happening, and when he gets that idea, it makes it happen. That's when shit starts happening again. Yeah, and also this movie involves people having superpowers because Ali Larder, <laughs> whose name is Clear, which makes no sense. <laughs> Ali Larder says that when Alex on the plane said the plane was gonna crash, she could she could feel what he was feeling. That's what I don't understand. That's something that I picked yeah. up whenever I watched this, too, is that Allie seems to be experiencing some sort of uh, mm-hmm. sympathetic powers yeah. to him that are just awakened yeah. as soon as Alex's powers start happening. Yeah. All right. So let's let's talk about this, like, semi, uh, semi from the beginning. 
the first thing we have to say is that this happened before 9-11. <laughs> otherwise, Clearly. Clearly, Otherwise, dude. this movie makes no sense. If you were born after 9-11, watching this movie will be like watching a movie where people are smoking on a plane. Yeah. That's, It'll just be like, what? That's how I feel about movies like Home Alone 2. Uh, well, not, not Home Alone 2 as in the sequel, but Home Alone also. <laughs> Although Home Alone yeah. 2 as well. Is that, you know, it's yeah. like, there's no way... That Home Alone could happen, happen in today's airport environment. There's no fucking way. Nope. Not a nope. Not a fucking way. Yeah. Like uh, this. This movie. Like <laughs> this movie is initiated by someone saying, "There's a f- this bl- This plane is gonna explode." And people. Th- he's taken off the plane, and told he'll have to take a later flight. <laughs> 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 Sir. If you're going to say the plane's going to explode, you're going to have to take a later flight. That's just the, the the that's just what you have to deal with. You've earned this later flight, sir. To be honest, like just thinking about uh, incidents with United Airlines in the past few months, yeah. like to even imagine a, a a time when passengers could just freely move seats seems almost quaint. Right, like, yeah. <laughs> Much less a guy screaming, this plane's going to blow up, and then yeah. not being put on a do not fly list. Yeah. Um, not being arrested, even. Just <laughs> taken off the plane and told you, you can, you'll can, you have to take a later flight. Don't worry. It won't. There's no extra charge. Yeah. We're all white people here. Yeah. <laughs> that is pretty amazing when you look at it in that context. No consequences, yeah. really. Yeah. And, uh, okay, so, but I mean, um, this movie starts with, um, you know, uh, Ale- uh, actually it starts with a long, prolonged sort of, uh, opening sequence that shows this travel book that keeps being referenced throughout the movie that is basically just Paris's death. Right. Like the travel book is you go to Paris, like, oh, all that happens there is dying. Everybody dies. There's just like mass death don't go to paris right paris equals death and what happens early in this movie that makes me kind of question everything is that one of the first incidents is one of the things that would be considered in screenwriting looking at the script the one of the initiating incidences is that he he says he's keeping his old like tag on his bag because it's good luck and his mom says that's silly and rips it off Mm -hmm. this never comes back it never comes back no one ever says well i I said if you rip that off the plane might crash you ripped it off and the plane crashed like well that might be kind of going into your idea about this being just self-fulfilling prophecy kind of stuff too where it's like yeah he was so superstitious that he believed that if his tag got ripped off bad things would happen and then it did so and he, he was just like oh happen. well here it goes yeah. yeah yeah now i do like one thing about this especially all the stuff leading up to the flight all of the stuff pertaining to the number 180 which is the flight number it's like <laughs> you know Flight number okay. 180. That that number is referenced very, very, very many times through the intro sequences. And there's there's actually a lot of really kind of clever stuff that deals with numerology and stuff throughout this movie where, um, well, even like one part there where he's in the plane and he looks out the window, or it may be, be, it might be when he's boarding the plane. He looks out the window or something and he sees like a baggage cart uh, drive by and, uh-huh. and it's 666. Six, six, yeah, uh-huh. like that's cool. Like I yeah. like that kind of thing. That, that's the kind of thing that if you look for it, you'll see it and it's clever, you know? Yeah, I, I think what we get established here is that um, is that the world is basically a coincidence engine mm-hmm. that, it, that runs on anxiety. Like the more anxious you are about coincidences, the more likely they are to coalesce to create your demise. Yeah. We kind of get introduced to the characters as they're getting ready. And this kid um, who plays his best friend, Todd, was in an episode of The X-Files, as many of the people in this movie were. Hmm. Um, He was in an episode of The X-Files and... uh, I I think he's good. I think he's a good actor. Uh, In this movie, however, 
I'm pretty sure he's trying his best to do a Robert Duvall impression. Yeah. Like, if you pay attention to his face and the way he's delivering lines, it's like he just saw Godfather 2, mm. and he was like, oh, Robert Duvall's awesome. And he's right. Robert Duvall is awesome. But... I, I, you're not Robert Duvall. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to and, watch it again with that in mind. Yeah, he comes up to Alex and he says, "This is the. This movie is full of lines that make no sense, just weird lines." And he says, "We should go take a shit." Yeah. <laughs> what? The fuck? And I, you can give me any reasoning beyond we should go take a shit that he could make all the sense in the world. But no, we should we shouldn't. The two of us should not hand in hand walk into a bathroom and go take a shit because it's it's stupid and a bad idea. Um anyway, so we get introduced to a lot of the characters. Um we're introduced to Sean William Scott who I think is playing a mentally challenged uh child in an adult's body. His role is never exactly quite clear. It seems yeah. like they were really sitting on the fence about what he does or what his character is in the movie yeah it doesn't make much of any sense and then we're also introduced to the bully who what's his name todd no 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 that's todd is his best friend the bully's oh, name is uh oh no <laughs> he's the car- the actor's name is kerr smith i could not even begin Hang to on. tell you i think that. i've got i think i've got it in my notes here his name is carter Oh, right. Yeah, Carter. Well, Carter, Ben, is one of the few characters that I've seen in a movie that makes me... Seriously, every time he's on screen, I want to punch him until my fists explode. (laughs) Like, I... He says... He says the dumbest lines I think I have ever heard. He says, at one point, I'm never going to die. Dude, that's exactly what I was about to say. There's that scene at the student funeral, the memorial thing, where he says, I will never die. It reminded me of, like, fucking Team America. Yeah. It's like, what? So bad. That's not, that's not a thing any teenager actually would ever think. I will like, never die. I will never die? What? Of course you will. We will all die. Um, anyway, so basically what happens, you know, early on is that we get the setup and we, we see that Alex foresees a plane explosion, which is an annoying thing. Like we see he sees the whole plane explosion, but of course we see it as though it's actually happening and then it's like, oh it didn't happen. It was a dream. Oh, although dream. I'll tell you, I do think that that sequence in his dream where the plane explodes, I think it's pretty badass. I think it looks pretty yes. good. That's that's actually the thing that's most annoying about it is because it's the best scene in the movie. It is the best scene in the and movie, it and it's like five, five or ten minutes in the movie, and it's already downhill from there. Um, it looks good because the thing is, is like even like a year later is when we started really getting into the. Um, really rubbery plasticky cgi yeah. in all these movies you know where everybody looked like they were made out of play-doh or something uh when mm-hmm. it came to special effects like these but it looks like this plain explosion scene where you got people getting sucked out of the cockpit and there's all these like random explosions and then i gotta tell you too like i really liked that during that whole sequence that dream sequence there you also just see other stuff that you would just randomly notice in a situation like that like you see the uh fucking stifler is over there eating like a bag of of whoppers malted milk ball (laughs) candies and you see a bunch of those like rolling all over the floor in a bunch of those shots i think that that's kind of a cool thing because that's the kind of thing that would just randomly catch your eye amongst all this pandemonium that there's candy rolling along the floor um yeah i do think that scene is pretty cool and there's not really a lot of soundtrack it's just screams and explosions and pandemonium and people getting sucked out of the cockpit and stuff or not the cockpit the uh people getting sucked out of the plane and stuff i think it's pretty rad i don't know i I liked it yeah it's the the most enraging part is it's almost like this is the movie you could have had that's true now watch this bullshit (laughs) 
<laughs> and I even too, I like the you know he gets kicked off the plane and stuff like that, and I even like the part where. You know, when they're in the terminal and they're watching the plane take off and you just see the plane explode in the background. Yeah. I think that looks pretty badass, man, because like the camera doesn't cut to a new shot of the plane blowing up. Like, no, it's the same. Yeah, it's straight from the 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 inside of the terminal. It's a great shot. And then and then like the sound wave hits and it blows the glass out of the or, or the terminal and stuff. I think it's pretty badass. Like I thought all of that stuff was really oh. well done and honestly did kind of lure me into this movie yes. where I was like, I don't know, this looks pretty sick. Like, I do like how this is going. Yeah, I thought seeing that crash and seeing, you know, the, the that explosion, etc., that it was all going to make up for the fact that when Alex said, this plane is going to crash, Carter, the bully, said, shut the fuck up, man immediately and got like i'm gonna fucking fight you i'm never gonna die i'm later gonna be listening to nine inch nails for some reason this movie has the worst soundtrack of all time and i'm i'm including other than nine Nails. yeah no that nine inch nails is fine it just it's only included because he says final destination in it that's correct yeah um, anyway, I, I'm including, like, the worst Nightmare on Elm Street, like, second song in the credit song. It's a nightmare! Yeah, those songs are better than every song on here, except if you uh, are a Nine Inch Nails fan and believe it was included for some other reason than the fact that he says Final Destination. <laughs> and speaking of bad soundtrack and just general millennial kind of nonsense i love that at the funeral scene well it's not really a funeral scene i love that at the memorial scene for all the students that died dude there's that guy that's there strumming like a damn takamini guitar and he is playing he's that song almost turns into every 90s song every other note that's what i was gonna say dude it is it is the chords it is g c add nine e minor seven and d which are the chords yep. that like every fucking dude our age learned how to play in high school. Yeah. Those are the four chords that you learned. I I don't remember exactly how that song goes, but if anybody is listening right now and can just go ahead and pause and listen to the song, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> that's every 90s song honestly yeah exactly but uh, jesus christ like the why like why what were we doing before 9 11 i don't want to say what i'm thinking because what i'm thinking is the most ridiculous thing in the world that 9 11 saved horror movies (laughs) but (laughs) what was going on in our goddamn world that this is what we feared what we Dude. feared was that it was that water would drip out of the back of your toilet and make you slip and somehow catch your neck on. I don't know what that was. And then uh, choke to death because your dumb ass is, is too fucking ridiculous to realize you could just set your ass on the edge of the tub and stop choking. <laughs> like, how is this a fucking movie? Okay. You do have a point there. That death, that was, was that Todd? Yeah, it's the, that's the first, like, coincidence death. His death was very avoidable, it would seem. It, yeah. it does seem, now that you mention it, that if he just would have stood up and got in line with that. Yeah. It's kind of like that clothes hanging line that they always have in, like, uh, like hotel rooms and shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, So, so I guess exactly you can what hang is, your yeah. clothes up and steam them or whatever. Yeah. It does seem like he could have just stood up, and that that kind of would have been a problem solved. There were a number of time a number of times in that scene because he's supposed to obviously be like slipping on soap, etc. But there were a number of times where it was obvious that he still had a, he could like easily grab the side of the tub. If you can grab the side of the tub, you can lean yourself onto the tub and then get your butt onto it. Like you don't have to choke to death, Todd. Yeah, probably come on, so. guy. He could have at least started jerking off or something. 
Yeah, yeah, at least, like, make it look like it wasn't a suicide. Make <laughs> it look like, hey, he was going out on his own terms. He was enjoying himself. Like, he was carotene Yeah, obviously. <laughs> now, the thing, the thing about that first coincidence death is that it's the only one that has, like, a real supernatural element to it. Yeah, you're right, because you see the water... It, like, drips out of the the toilet valve there, and then after he's dead, it retreats back. Yeah, and it's blue. Which I I guess some people put those blue, like, cleaner things in their tank. Well, but but the thing is, the the water was leaking out of the valve. It wasn't leaking out of the tank. Yeah, and then it got sucked into... Yeah, it it makes no sense. I think that was just to make it more visible on screen, I guess, but it's still, you know... Yeah, no, and I, I I get that, but, like... It makes no sense because none of the other deaths are explicitly supernatural. That's true. You should make all of the deaths supernatural. Yeah, yeah all of the other ones are just coincidence. Yeah, you're right. Now that now that you mention that, that is kind of true. Because I'm thinking about like the teacher lady whose you know coffee cup is yeah. cracked and she pours alcohol into it and then it leaks into her computer. Like that's just yeah, that could just really happen. Or a girl yeah. walking out in front of a bus. Like, there's nothing supernatural about yeah, that. Yeah, nothing supernatural about that. Or uh, a piece of debris being picked up by a hanging chain on a train and then, you know, decapitating a Sean William Scott. Yeah. That happened in real life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Sean William Scott, is a he's a Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> this is actually a snuff film. Yeah, guys. For real, don't get open flame near Sean William Scott. He will get angry. He'll throw a little girl into a lake. (laughs) You know, the deaths in this movie are definitely the star. I feel like this is kind of the precursor to, like, Saw. Because definitely, like, Saw... Uh Only reason people watch Saw are to see people, you know, killed and mutilated in horrible Mm -hmm. ways. And in this movie, we've got... The aforementioned shower strangling. We've got... I really like the teacher lady who, you know, as I said, yeah. she's got vodka leaking out of a cup that leaks into her computer, which starts a fire, and it it burns her house down, and she also gets stabbed by a whole block full of knives. I like when the knives yeah. hit her. It's pretty brutal. <laughs> that, that scene, if you've seen Idle Hands, which is, you know, Devin Sawa's movie before this... I haven't. It, well... It, it's not great, but check it out if you got time. Um, this scene, the scene where the teacher dies reminds me most of Idle Hands, and it's also the second most charming that Devin Sawa is in this movie. Mm. And I I think, like, sincerely, he's cast just fine. I think Ali Larder um, is a good actress. It's weird that they made her be this sort of, like, semi-goth Sculptress, mm-hmm. yeah, like, dude, we'll talk about her more in a second. Yeah, yeah. And the guy who plays the bully, I, he does have. It's obviously effective because he pisses you the yeah. fuck off. Yeah, he has that back fife and gesicht, a face in need of a punch. Like he, <laughs> he really has it. And his girlfriend in there does too, where she's just like a fucking worthless bitch, and she gets smacked by that bus. I like that bus death pretty well too. To get back to that's the actually deaths. really yeah. I, I really did enjoy the quickness of that, but it undercuts the entire idea that death has anything to do with this. And I like, too, that, that the main character there, Alex, he always has some kind of a premonition about what's going to happen. It seems like most of them have to do with, like, he sees some shit in a reflection. Like, he saw the bus in a reflection. Yeah. And he saw the train that would kill Stifler. He saw that in the reflection of the car window and stuff. Kind of kind of interesting how all that sort of plays out i guess but yeah i do like that bus death it is very quick and instant and it's obviously cgi but it again it's doesn't not suffer. actually wait really it's actually not yeah no that's a that's a, a real a real fake body oh that's rad yeah, yeah i yeah that's uh the first death they filmed and yeah they used to they used a, a a cast of the actress and filled it with blood basically so. well fuck me movie magic it looks good it does it looks great i like that i like that there's some variety in the deaths in this movie but i do i i will say i think they could be gorier yeah i wouldn't mind yeah. if they were a little bit more heinous well i mean this is an 
interesting era and we may have just been spoiled in the past you know 15 years yeah. or so but like um the original cut of scream was gonna be rated nc-17 jesus yeah like this is a period where the mpaa was going wild with their like power hmm. they 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 realized that there was no other outlet than you know movie theaters and and to be in a movie theater you needed an mpaa rating and, and, and the moment that like we get streaming and we get the possibility of like you know seeing movies brand new movies on demand the mpa lost like all their power and all that like old school like you can't show this you can't show that just went out the fucking window That's a good point. and now we can yeah we can see whatever we want now and it's great it's perfect and wonderful and i hope it doesn't change ever but yeah the <sighs> this is not as gory as you would hope like i i do like when uh todd like when he's like choking he gets the petechial hemorrhaging in his yeah. eyes the that's a real cool element i like that too i have that in my notes i'm like bloodshot eyes yeah. very cool i i do like that yeah. that is pretty rad and sean william scott's death is great yeah like when he when Billy dies, it looks great. It looks so good. Yeah, it does. Um, so like if you're if you're hanging all your hopes on the deaths looking great, if you're the director of this movie, you sit back and you go, yeah, I did it. I Nailed did it. what I was. Uh, if you're sitting back and going, do I have a coherent story with lines that make sense, and does this not seem like I'm trying to force an X Files episode into an hour and a half? <laughs> Like, you failed. You failed terribly. I would really, really, really do want to see the Mandela Effect reality where this was just an X-Files episode, though, and Scully and Mulder are like... It would be like, good! No, he is seeing the future. No, he isn't. I want to yeah. believe. No, I, want, I don't. Like, yes! I want to see that, where maybe he sees, like, Scully's death in the future. Uh-huh. Yes! Yes, or where maybe Mulder is the person on the plane and he's the one who sees that everyone's going to die. Like, yeah. maybe, like, yes, this could be a great... Uh, they didn't even cut Mulder and Scully out of this, though. Those two <laughs> FBI agents are Mulder and Scully. Like, they just cast different actors to play them. Uh, yeah, basically, you're right, you're right. Um, And the, the thing is, this was written for... This is a spec script from 94, meaning the first season 94. of X-Files. Wow. And, and it shows. Because the... Like, there sh this should be edgier. Mm -hmm. There should be more... Because watching... I know what you did last summer in Urban Legend and Scream, etc. Those are movies that don't hesitate to actually cuss or to actually show brutality mm -hmm. this movie has fucks and shits thrown in there but they don't seem organic yeah it seems like they were like told oh you should cuss so it's r-rated and they were like oh okay well when you say hey dad say hey fuck dad <laughs> <laughs> like it none of it makes sense it's all like it's but very here's forced, the yeah. Yeah, here's the main problem I'm having is how did how did this like we're talking new line cinema. We're talking big deal. They, they, yeah. it, yes. And in 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 94 they had had made um uh new nightmare. Like they had they had just dealt with big time Wes Craven. They just dealt with Robert England. They just dealt with all these people who know what they're doing in a horror movie. Bob Shea is reading this script and he's saying, This'll do. Like let, let's put this out there. Oh, what do you want to put? Like five, ten million into this? No, twenty-three million. And don't get me any big stars. <laughs> Please no. If I see a big star, get him the fuck out of here. Damn. And dude. I want Allie Larder to play Jennifer Love Hewitt from I Know What You Did Last Summer. Because that's the character she's playing. <laughs> it's the exact same. Now, one of the characters in this movie that entertains me the most is the 
the sort of interrogator inspector guy, and I can't remember the yeah. actor's name, but I, I recognized him immediately as the guy that was in. Uh, did you see Dope? Dope? No, is that that's with... Um, it's on Netflix. Uh, Professor X, right? It's with who? James McAvoy. Uh, I don't think no. that he's okay, in No, okay, never mind. It's got the same kid that's in the Get Down. Okay, don't know this at all then. Dude, dope. You, Let's hear about you it. You need to watch Dope. It is fucking awesome. I okay. think it's still on Netflix. It might not be, but I think that it's still on Netflix. It is so badass. It is such a good fucking movie. But this movie is seriously like a 10 out of 10 until you get to these parts where, you know, the inspector guy that's in this movie that's like really fucking goddamn weird and mysterious all the time and like is a horrible actor. Uh,. Yeah, the Mulder character. Correct. Yes. Well, he's in Dope, and he is playing the same character, where he is just like this horrible, huh. awkwardly mysterious, like, his character makes no sense. I have no idea how this guy gets work. It's like him and that fucking girl from damn Twilight, fucking Kristen Stewart. I'm like, how do these people continue <laughs> Chris, to get work? Cause, uh, runaways. Kristen Stewart is good in, in things. Uh, if she if she puts herself to it, she's really great. She that's wasn't how. too bad in Adventureland. She was in that, wasn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's exactly it. I mean, Kristen Stewart, if she puts any effort in, is really good. She's and put so, some effort course, into closing her goddamn mouth every now and then. Yeah, or not looking like she's on heroin. Oh my right? god, yeah. dude! <laughs> but this guy, yeah. this guy is in dope, and again, he plays the same character. He's just he talks really awkwardly and overly oh, dramatic god. and i'm yeah, like that's him oh my mm-hmm. god i saw this movie and i was like oh he's the exact same character how does this guy get fucking work he's i don't horrific. i don't know i uh, that could be asked so often in this this movie itself like what what do you how? think about what? ali larder's character clear i've uh, i hate it <laughs> i hate it <laughs> Ali Larder is a good actress. She is. She is. Yeah, she's uh, good she in heroes. Great in so. Yeah, she's good in heroes. Uh, the Diabolical, which is not a great horror movie, but she is really good in. I loved her in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Yeah, she farted really good. She did. She's she's great. Um, in this though, they ask her to just go against her type. Which I'm not going to say Allie Larder doesn't have depth or like an interesting backstory, but she's not this character and she can't play this character. No, because like, she's supposed to be this dark kind of artsy type. And I even spent a lot of the movie wondering if she was some sort of a supernatural character or maybe like a figment of Alex's imagination where like... I would believe that. Yeah, yes. Yeah, because there's I a would few believe scenes that. where like she's there and then she vanishes immediately. And then her whole yeah. sort of having the sympathetic power with him. And then, like, hardly anybody ever interacts with her other than Alex. So I was wondering if, like, oh, you may- actually maybe just she's dead. blew my fucking mind. Ben, <laughs> do you realize at the, at the funeral, that terrible fucking funeral, yeah. there's, a, there's a moment where Alex and Clear are a foot away from each other and the newspaper guy takes a picture of them and then later he's looking at that newspaper and the picture is clear and three foot of nothing no way yes it's the same fucking picture the guy took at the funeral it's not a different picture and he's not in it fuck and it shows that picture twice I didn't like, notice uh, that. Two different instances in the movie, he looks at that picture, and it's like, both times I was like, he should be in that picture. He was in the picture when they took the picture. Huh. So, may, like, I think I think this movie, uh, I mean, you, either it's a pure horror genius where they just provided so many outs, like there's so many different ways you can go with it, or what actually happened and what absolutely is the truth they didn't give a fuck and they didn't pay attention so this movie <laughs> Probably is just full of bullshit i'm gonna go with the latter on that but it is fun to imagine maybe it's the former yeah yeah this movie could have been 
All right. I loved her <laughs> shit ass sculpture that she did. That was supposed oh to be my Alex. God, she's like, yeah. oh, he's undefined. He's uncertain of his future, or whatever the fuck she says. It's just horse yeah. shit, dude. I'm I'm pretty positive because uh, listen, I'm a huge X Files fan. Yeah. I have seen, like, I watched every episode as they aired. Damn. I re- I remember the the feeling of of missing an episode and not knowing what the fuck is going on because you'll not see that episode for maybe six months and you'll only see it if you're lucky and rerun. Mm-hmm. I know those episodes backwards and forwards, and I know that when this spec script was written, that scene where she's talking about her sculptures had to be between her and Mulder. Wow. That was absolutely a scene between her and Mulder where she would have been flirting with Mulder and Mulder would have been flirting back. And it, it, it like the part where, uh, it, like she, she's talking about how like, um, th- she's like, this, this is a, a sculpture of you. This is what I think about when I think of you. And he goes, I'm sorry. Like, that's a perfect Mulder reply. Yeah. Like, it's sardonic, and it's, like, uh, self-effacing, but it's also, like, charming and funny. Like, that's exactly what Mulder would have said in that moment. Uh, And so that scene actually makes no sense because suddenly Alex is smooth. Like, Alex isn't smooth. He's not not capable of, like, being uh, charming in that way Mm -hmm. he's more charming in the sense of like he's like little boy charming right he's not like uh smarter like maybe smarter than you and 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 maybe like he he's he's thinking two or three steps ahead of you type of charming he's not that now in addition to all of the you know somewhat messy gory deaths in the movie there's one scene in here that i found the most brutal to watch which is that scene where dude is is shaving and by shaving i mean he takes a straight razor and immediately puts it to his throat and just cuts a big gash in his neck (laughs) yeah (laughs) that was the hardest scene in the movie for me to watch dude it's like he's an alien who was told what shaving is. Yeah, he's like, like you he, take this, you take this, and you press it against the flesh. It just cuts his fucking until throat blood. Open. Yeah, and once blood, you move on. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Here's another theory I have about this movie. Talking about that scene specifically, it is possible that the killer in this movie is John Denver's ghost. Oh shit. Because in every kill, Rocky Mountain High is playing. Hey, and how did John Denver die? Plane crash. Uh, well, as we, yeah, as we heard while the two of them were shitting and holding hands, John Denver died in a plane crash. Oh my god. This might be the best horror movie ever. <laughs> There's so it many might fun. be. It's like, is he, is he a telekinetic killer? Is Allie yeah. Larder a ghost? Is John Denver killing everybody? Like, there's so many possibilities for what could be going on. I would love to find out that the facts in this case are that Ali Larder is a ghost, that through his own uh, innate telekinesis, uh, amplified by (laughs) John Denver's (laughs) ghost... He's maybe, able to accidentally kill his friends. Maybe John Denver's ghost found this tele telekinetic kid and inhabited him and was like, here's my vehicle, here's my vessel. Yeah, and and when he did it, he was like, oh, by the way, though, you can't have the rights to leaving on a jet plane. The definitive, oh, right, John Denver died in a plane crash song. Woof. Yeah. No. What? If there Why is- did they go with Rocky Mountain High? <laughs> what? That's like that's like in uh, Devil's Advocate when at the end they don't go with uh, they don't go with sympathy for the devil. They go with paint it black. Yeah, it's like you were so fucking close. What are you doing? You c- yeah. Also, you had a twenty-three million dollar budget. You're gonna tell me you couldn't afford? leaving on a jet yeah, plane. Yeah, god damn it. Fuck you. You know what? You're right. God damn it. That's making me so mad right now. Why the fuck mm-hmm. didn't they go with leaving on a jet plane? Yes. It's this is the right definitive, there. 
ironic John Denver song. Yes. I, and the thing is, is like, if the makers of this movie were any more high class and had higher standards, you would think that they would go, no, that's just too on the nose. But there's plenty of stuff in this movie that is too on the nose. So you know that never crossed their minds. They just missed it. It was right there and they missed it. Yeah, if they were thinking two on the nose, why didn't they go with sunshine on my shoulders makes me happy? Wow. Wow, dude. Like, oh. <laughs> I mean, okay. Further, I I need to point out that James Wong also directed The One with Jet Li, okay. which is a good movie. I mean, it's not great, but it's a okay movie. Serviceable. Um, Yeah. And then he directed uh, Dragon Ball Z Evolution, which is generally considered, uh, like, I mean, if you could make uh, a a, a movie that embarrasses your ancestors, (laughs) like, that that was it. (laughs) Like, a movie that, that is, like, six generations back in your ancestry, like, people who never even seen pictures in a row. Yeah would watch it and they would be like i feel like this is not true to the source material yeah <laughs> like <laughs> and that was it that ended his his directing Jesus. that was it now one yeah. of my favorite scenes of this movie and one where i thought maybe i was on to something um is whenever clear god i just hate saying her fucking name that's not a goddamn name her name is clear waters by the way god damn really yeah. God, that's stupid. Well, that scene yeah. where her and Alex like break into that morgue and then I guess Candyman comes uh, out and Candy he's Candyman totally, comes out. Dude, yes. He, he's not even phased by the fact that these teenagers broke into a no. morgue. He just starts chatting with them and yeah. shit. Yeah, well that's that's exactly my point behind the entire idea cuz he's the one who introduces to him the concept that death is after them. He has the death I just design think he's, speech, yeah. Yeah, I just think he's fucking with them cuz they broke into his morgue. Like Like there's no there's no reason to believe that the speech 45 minutes into an hour and a half movie is the definitive answer to what's going on. I'd like to see another movie where it turns out that that guy didn't even work at the morgue. He was just also some guy that breaks into morgues to, like, fuck corpses. (laughs) (laughs) At some point, these two white kids bust in, and he's like, oh, shit, I got to play something up here to make it look like I work here. (laughs) Play it cool. Oh, my God. Freak him out. Get him out of here. We got to write a movie about that guy. What if it's, yes, what if it's both that and he is still Candyman. Yeah. So like somebody somebody went into the bathroom during a funeral and said Candyman three times and walked out a little too early and then he showed up and he was like, Oh fuck, what am I gonna do now? Oh I dude. guess I'll fuck these dead bodies. Like I don't know. <laughs> and man, you know, the the fact that he is not actually a morgue worker is further proved by the fact that he uses the line, You don't even wanna fuck with that Mac Daddy. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ. You don't even want to fuck with that Mac Daddy. How many times do you think he went over it and said, do you really want me to say this? Is there no Tony better Ta- way okay. to say this? Do you uh, I'm going to go ahead and this? say this. Tony Todd is a great actor. First off, Candyman is an amazing fucking movie, but uh, Tony Todd in general is a great actor. I'm going to assume he said at least a couple times, like, guys, this is not a good line. Yeah, yeah, there's got to be uh, something better we could do here. Yeah. God, dude. I yeah. I don't know. I I think in the end the biggest crime is that the bully character didn't die in a plane crash. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at one point uh Clear Waters um our uh, <laughs> our our protagonist's girlfriend our our mannequin girlfriend yeah she tells a story uh, about how her dad uh went out for cigarettes and got killed and the the best world she can imagine is a world in which her dad still had cigarettes (laughs) i'd like to imagine another storyline where it kind of based on your your theory that alex has telekinesis and stuff right yeah. 
maybe she is actually a hot topic mannequin that was telepath telekinetically brought to life by Alex. Oh shit! This is mannequin three. <laughs> mannequin three. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's an interest. Listen, we've come up with six interesting movies. Yeah, other, that are other better than could this have movie taken to make this better. And, <laughs> and Ben, seriously, it, if you were out for a good horror movie in the year two thousand, you you had American Psycho. Oh. You had Shadow of the Vampire. Uh-huh. You had maybe Ginger Snaps. If that's if that's your interest. Or you had Final Destination. So four movies in that year you could have spent your money on. And you had to just go see one, right? This is so, the best way that you had to celebrate after Y2K didn't happen. That's the best you had. Ben, have I ever talked about how I was legitimately afraid of Y2K? Oh, me too. Of course I was. Well, here's the thing. if And a lot of people, you know... Uh, we'll look back and be like, <laughs> you old people, why were you afraid of that? Well, because it was a, a real and legitimate fear yeah. that uh, because people weren't keeping up with uh, computer technology, that older technology would fail because it couldn't register the difference between double zero and 2000. Yeah. Uh, it would have been a big issue. Could have been bad. So, could have been real bad. Um, I I think it is possible, just thinking about this, that we're not weird, and if you were around at that time, and a creative, you thought, well, why spend any time writing a horror movie script when it's all gonna end on December 31st, 1999, and then it didn't, and they were like, fuck, we gotta make some movies. <laughs> Final Destination, <laughs> approved. $23 million, here, just go make it, make it, go! Yeah. <laughs> we're living on borrowed time anyway, fuck it. <laughs> How long before the 2012 collapse that the Mayans predicted by having a calendar uh, that ended in 2012? Yeah. I like the, 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 <laughs> many, the many different theories that we've come up with here, Steve, and I think that they're actually all better than what happened yeah because what happened was what i mean like they go to france at the end like they three of them clear uh alex and the bully for whatever reason escape yeah and and for three months nothing happens and they go to france and then they're sitting by the way same exact intersection they were sitting at when that girl got hit by the bus oh just on the other side of the intersection oh, shit. like that's it the only difference uh they're sitting on the other side of that intersection apparently in france now and also ali larger has blonde hair now yeah what the to fuck? indicate indicate i i no longer sculpt i'm I, like what does this indicate like i got rid i'm of done that with business i'm done with having a personality now i'm okay with being married to this guy or whatever <laughs> i don't know like what does that indicate it's stupid anyway and, and everything's fine until alex thinks like oh but maybe i'm next and by thinking that it makes a rube goldberg device fucking set off and then like mouse traps into the bully dying I guess. There's kind of that convoluted shit where it's like, if you cheat death, then the next person in line, because he finds this divine order to figure out the order everybody's going to die in. And it's kind of like, if yeah. you cheat it, then the next person is up. So he... Uh, it's overly convoluted and stupid for the caliber of this movie in terms of him like, oh, I'm gonna, yes. I'm gonna help Ali Larder not get killed, and I'm gonna jump in line in front of her. And it's pretty stupid. Right. And then, yeah, in the movie it's fucking bully guy that dies right yeah well i mean we don't see his death which is upsetting yeah. like i would have been happy with seeing him like spurting blood out of his throat and being like oh, i wish i had not said i wasn't gonna die and i wish i didn't be an asshole all the time like i i would want i wish today was tomorrow yeah i wish today was tomorrow i wish my heart was a gunship <laughs> like i 
Like, he could have said anything to, to like, suddenly redeem his character somewhat, but no. He's just an what asshole. We get in, he's just an asshole, and, like, you might say, like, oh, well, that's realistic. Well, like, okay, yeah, let's say suddenly we're talking about realism with this fucking movie. Like, yeah, I guess that is realistic, but what about everything else? The ending was pretty, the ending was pretty weak. I was pretty let down with the... With the final yeah. moments of the flick there, I did think that was kind of lame. Mm-hmm. So, Steve, overall, what would you rate this movie on a scale of, of 1 out of 10? And and before you answer that, let me also ask you this. Was this the first yeah. time you watched this movie? Yeah. This is the first time I've ever seen this movie. I watched it four times. God uh, damn, four uh, times? I- ben, this movie perplexed me in a way that... No- I I had to watch six movies ju- that just came out in the a general time range as this to try to understand how this shit fucking movie <laughs> made five times over budget. I don't understand it. This is shit. Yeah. It's so bad. And it's making me like go back and th- I think I gave Killer Clowns a four. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking, oh, Killer Clowns is a fucking 10 in relation to this. <laughs> like, this movie is so bad. And I don't want, like, I, I don't want to pretend like there are no positives to this movie. Yeah. I think, I think all of the actors involved were giving it their all. They were just miscast or, uh, or like, just poorly written. Um, it's poorly written. It's poorly directed. It's poorly executed in all fronts the music makes me want to die <laughs> like it being di- i i sent you a text and said be sure to listen to the song in the, the, the outro credits. song D- dude is the goddamn dumbest song of i've never all heard time. a worse song I've never heard a worse song in my life. He says, like, I don't wish to go by the devil. I don't wish to go by the demon. <laughs> Some bullshit like don't this. Don't wish to go by Satan. He says Satan, <laughs> not Satan. He says Satan because it goes with the, 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 I guess, the progression he was going for. He also says at one point, it's cold down there. It's cold down there. Yeah, it's really cold down there. <laughs> Have I reiterated that it is not warm? It's cold. It. Uh, I hate this movie, and I will put it. I, I'll say, without exception, I have not seen a worse movie. Jesus, I have not because this movie. <laughs> This movie makes no sense. None of it makes sense. None of it works well. None of it flows. It is it is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. And I'm going to give it one star. <laughs> one out of ten. One out of ten. That is easily the lowest that we've ever had on this show. Yeah, I can't wait to see a worse movie so I can raise this posthumously. Wow. Because this is so bad. That is so funny, man. That is so funny. Wow. What would you say? Okay, Steve, so this was also my first time watching this movie, which is weird considering that both of us kind of grew up in the Mm -hmm. time period where we should have been watching this movie. Yeah. And perhaps being makey outy with someone. Yeah, yeah. Um, Like, I went through that. Terrible finger banging, yeah. Yes, exactly, exactly. So I went through that entire era without having seen this. I, I did see, you know, several of the other ones in this era like scream and uh i know you did last summer and shit like that jeepers creepers Mm -hmm. you know oh yeah Uh uh-huh which i want to do on the show i want to watch that again because i haven't watched that since damn 2000 justin long's always fun oh yeah oh yeah he is in that um Mm -hmm. so this was also my first time watching this movie and um you know what i didn't hate it nearly as much as you did like good good it is not good and all no. of the possibilities of what we just worked out are way more fun than what is actually in the movie. And the movie is full of bullshit uh, <laughs> problems and acting and dialogue and so on. Maybe it is just because I am such a sucker for horror movies that, like, 
uh, as I've mentioned, they're like pizza to me where even a Totino's is welcome in my house. Even a, a little yeah. Caesars, I'm totally on board with it. I'm okay with well, that. Let's have a $5. Yeah. Let's do it. Exactly. It'll get good to me and it'll, it'll work fine. Um, mm-hmm. And maybe too that it is just so, 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 so of that magical, you know, 17, 16, 17, 18 year old. Well, I guess this came out in, in 2000, so I would have been 16 years old. And this so takes me back to being in that time period. Maybe I'm such a sentimental piece of shit that I'm just like, oh, this is neat. It's kind of like revisiting my <laughs> youthful makey outy days. I don't know. But either yeah. way, even though the movie has a lot of fucking problems, I didn't hate it. Um, again, I thought that some of the scenes were really well done, like the airplane explosion and the yeah. and then the subsequent actual airplane explosion. That was cool. Several of the deaths had nice touches. Uh, again, I liked that the guy's eyes got bloodshot. I liked seeing that... that um, block full of knives fall into Valerie. Yeah. I thought that looked pretty brutal. Um, and it was pra- it was practical, too. They had her, like, head in a plywood box underneath and, you know, a fake body sticking out so that knives could actually go through it and stuff. That's cool. Um, I liked... Okay. When I say soundtrack, I do not mean the licensed Oh, the songs. score! The score is really good, though. It's very Hitchcockian. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it's good. It's, yeah, like, all it is. suspenseful, like, string section stuff Yeah, that, that yeah, could have been it. in, like, North by Northwest or or something like that. I liked all the original score for the movie a lot, too, so that just made me have kind of good classic horror movie vibes. Now, it's not one that I am in any hurry to rewatch. <laughs> then again, I have not watched it four times. That that that's true. That might be enough to drive me to the point of insanity and realize what a, a, a pile of shit this movie is. <laughs> but while I didn't absolutely loathe it, I didn't love it either. Again, I'm not going to rewatch it. I I don't think that I'll buy it or anything soon. I watched it on on Cinemax Go. I don't yeah. I don't think that I'll buy a physical copy to revisit. But it's one of those ones where it's like. You know, if it was on at somebody's house and I was with some some buddies, we could we could watch it and laugh and cut up and be like, "Oh man, fucking remember when you could get off a plane and stuff like that." <laughs> <laughs> we could revisit the good old days just fine watching this movie. So, uh, didn't love it, didn't hate it. I think that I'll I'll probably go about 4.5 out of 10, man. It's All right. It's very di- I think this is the first time that we've probably really majorly disagreed on a movie sure i mean we both still think it's below five. Oh yeah so. <laughs> there's so much better things it's like you know the the absolute king of this era as we discussed is scream and i want to do scream yeah. on this show sometime that's a, oh yeah that's a Great fun movie. movie it plays with a lot of horror tropes and stuff and is meta in a cool way and this is one of those movies that that really did kind of miss the point but it's still not yes. it's still not horrendous to me. Um, yeah. so yeah, I'm gonna go with four and a half out of ten. I I think honestly, like uh look up Glenn Morgan and James Wong. Every X Files episode they did was great. Oh wow. Like they're so good. Um they did Millennium episodes, uh, which is also in the X Files universe and, and um like they they know what they're doing. I I think this was a test, but then I see a twenty-three million dollar budget, and I think there's no way this is a test. Like, how how is this a test? This is like, a final product. How, yeah. Um. I also I I have one thing to say about the. F- this is something I always think about when people say, uh, you know, bad sex is like bad pizza, etc. People have a very limited. Uh, imagination when it comes to pizza. When I lived in Russia one time, I was served pizza that was um, Edam cheese oh. and um, potatoes, boiled potatoes, and uh, liver. That's really bad pizza, though. Okay, so let's just say right now, then, so anytime somebody says 
uh, bad whatever is like bad pizza. I want you to think about that pizza, and I want you to go ahead and try it. If you have the opportunity, and don't don't give me this. Oh, oh, he must mean like a uh, pate type of liver. No, no, no. We're talking uh, roughly chopped beef liver that was boiled. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> just when oh. you bite into it, I want you to think. Oh, am I chewing on my tongue, or am I biting into pizza? That's scarier than anything in this movie. Yes. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and that's why that pizza gets three stars. Three stars out of ten. Yeah. And this movie gets one. Damn from it. From me. From this guy who's had liver and potato pizza. Well, on the bright side, let's go ahead and cover something that's going to be, I'm sure, a little bit better than a liver and potato pizza next week on yeah. the show. We're going to watch a piece of history from me and Steve's old yeah, yeah. stomping ground morristown motherfucking tennessee represent a little flick called evil dead yeah that michigan state uh, film project yeah i'm so excited to talk about this and talk about our our morristown history with this movie and so on so that should be a lot of fun that's a really fucking cool flick so i look forward to talking about that one in the meantime yeah. steve where can these fine folks that have listened get a hold of us well, if you're the oldest person in the world, you can always email us at deadandlovelypod at gmail.com. And if you, like us, are youths of 30s-ish age, youths. Um, <laughs> you can always find us uh, on Twitter or Instagram at deadlovelypod. That pod is so dead and lovely. You guys can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ben Eller Guitar is all one word. Where can they find you, Steve? Uh, you can find me at Steven Spratling, and um, I'm going to let you figure out how to spell that. I'll tell you this right now, though. Unlike every person I've ever talked to on a telephone, there is no B in my name. Oh, wow. I Steven? don't know where you would put it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for listening to this. And if you guys like this episode or want to do me uh, a good old birthday favor, please go and rate and review this podcast on iTunes. It really helps us out a ton to show up in the searches and stuff. So please go on iTunes. Give us a good review. Uh, don't use any any potty mouth words or they won't post it. Just give us a good review, even if it just says, cool beans. And that's it. And give us five stars. It helps us really show up in the searches and stuff. So please do that for us. In the meantime, you guys have been absolutely wonderful. And we have been dead and lovely. Say goodbye, Steve. Goodbye, Ben. Oh, no. You're supposed to say goodbye, Steve. Shit. Sure.